any man can be changed by faith no matter how they may be fettered is what he said the old english word that means bound any person can be changed by faith no matter how they may be bound that means that satan cannot make a bondage that your faith cannot break off of you it's now time for mark hankins faith for every nation mark and trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. We're going to study on the spirit of faith that years ago the Lord said something to me this way, the principles of faith are taught, but the spirit of faith is caught. Principles of faith are taught and they must be taught, but the spirit of faith is more than just a formula. It is a fire where the Psalmist David said, the Lord will light my candle. Then I can run through the troop, leap Lift over the wall. wall, chase my enemies down. That means there's a big turnaround when the Lord lights my candle. So the spirit of faith is actually your a fire yeah. that gets lit on the inside of you through time with the Lord, time in the Word, and time with other believers with the spirit of faith. Amen. So um, this is awesome. This is going to help and enhance mm -hmm. our daily living and our success. Every day. We Every walk day. by faith yes. and not by sight. <laughs> we live by faith. And so when Paul says, we have the same spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4, 13, he said, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. He said, we also believe and therefore speak. speak. And so when Paul says, we have, we having the same spirit of faith, mm -hmm. according as it is written. So he's quoting from the book of Psalms. According as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. Mm -hmm. He said, we also believe and therefore speak. speak. So the spirit of faith has these two main ingredients. I believe and I speak. I believe and I speak. So that's how the spirit of faith works, by believing and by speaking. So uh, yesterday we talked about believing a lot. We really emphasized getting our believer tune, tuned in, turned on by looking unto Jesus, by looking at mm. His Word, by focusing, absorbing Him, the spirit of faith that He is and He has becomes ours. Yeah. We share the same spirit of faith. Yeah. You know, Mark, when you say a, the spirit of faith has to be caught, mm. now, for some reason, I thought about catching a ball. <laughs> yeah. And I remember when we were young parents, you would take Alicia out and Caleb, I mean, not Caleb, but Caleb Aaron. wasn't around. Aaron out and you would throw baseballs or softballs Football, yeah. and, and everything. And well, you were throwing a uh, ball to Alicia and she had her mitt. Yeah. And uh, so, but when it, the ball came to her, instead of, you know, grabbing it with a mitt, you know, you're supposed to keep your eye on the ball. <laughs> She would close her eyes. <laughs> and so here comes a ball, and she'd close her eyes, and the ball would hit her on the head. Yeah, bless her heart. <laughs> so she never caught the ball. It would just fall. Bless her heart. She just. Because she closed her eyes. <laughs> maybe I wasn't a very good teacher, maybe. Well, I she did learned. My best, she so, learned. That was just the beginning. So she of wasn't it. really catching it. She wasn't catching it. So sometimes you she see got her people. eye off the ball. <laughs> so I don't know. It's just people are not necessarily catching. They're not catching the spirit of faith because you get your eyes off. And, and then of Paul what says, God, not only catch it, but he says, <laughs> Hold fast hold to fast. your confession of Gotta faith. Gotta hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and so, for me, that always brings up the illustration of when, when we were um, kids and we played football yeah. in the backyard. Yeah. And so my uh, older brother, we'd play against him and his friends, and we were the little guys. So um, I took off, and they're going to throw a, a pass, you yeah. know, a long pass. So I, I happened to get open. 
threw me a long pass. It was really long. We thought it was long, but the backyard really wasn't that big. <laughs> But it seemed like it was a long pass. In your pass. little boy eyes, that was a long It was a pass. long pass, maybe <laughs> five or ten yards. So they threw a long pass. I got behind it. I got open. I caught the ball, and I was so happy, man. I just turned around as soon as I caught it, and I started running for the goal line. <laughs> well, <clears throat> my parents had these uh, air-conditioned window units, you know, that they left in the windows hanging outside the back of the house. So mm -hmm. I can remember catching the ball, I was so thrilled. And I turned around to run, and I hit one of those air-conditioned window units. Poor Mark. Man, I, I was seeing stars. I mean, bam, I'm out like a light, and I'm on the ground, and they were standing around me, looking at me to see if I was dead. But they stand around, and when I opened my eyes, I said, I still got the ball. You know what, I have a similar story. So if you get knocked down, Hold, Hold on. on the ball. <laughs> Hold on to the word. Hold on to your confession. We used to right? play. We did. We played in the alley. Sometimes we played football. And you did. Yeah, we did with the neighborhood kids, what, our what family. What position did you play? I played catcher. You, you were a catcher. <laughs> I think you're in the wrong sport, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we called it uh, anyway. I caught the ball. <laughs> did you have a racket? Did, oh, is that tennis? Okay. It's so, bad. Uh, well, I caught the ball. Yeah. And I, I was pretty good. You're pretty good, I can imagine. Oh, it's cute. You're cute. <laughs> I caught the ball and I turned around and instead of the air conditioner, it was the telephone post. Oh, <laughs> wow. And I just hit That's it straight. That's what happened. That's what happened. That's <laughs> and I had this big uh, scab right oh. <laughs> under my nose. And then that week we took family pictures and I had this big scab. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow. So that's my, but I still had the ball, I think. I don't know. Yeah, well. I know good, you had the ball. It's a good story anyway. <laughs> so she ran into the telephone pole. <laughs> so let's see, let's get spiritual about this. You might be holding on fast to your confession of faith yeah. and you, you catch feel it. like you hit something. You came up. Ah, you might have caught it. You might be down. You might have got hit in the mouth. Hold fast. Just keep holding fast. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan until you get hit in the mouth. So we're talking about the spirit of faith, yep. fighting the good fight of faith. No such thing as unchallenged faith. And so we're just having a blast. I mean, talking about how faith works because God has dealt to every believer a measure I like that word dealt. It reminds me of a card game. <laughs> you know, everybody yeah. gets the same You're amount of cards. You're just getting reminded about a lot of games today, huh? It's so, game day. <laughs> you, had, you got anything for volleyball yet? So, uh, oh, y'all play a lot of place. cards at your house. So, God has dealt. He's dealt. Everybody gets the same amount. Gets the same measure. measure. Now, my dad used to, he would buy us like a Snickers candy bar. But my dad didn't have enough money to buy everyone a Snickers candy bar. <laughs> so we had to split it, right? So here's the way my dad would do his split. He'd say, now, Mark, you and Mike, y'all have to split this candy bar. So he would say, here's the way I'm going to do it. Mike, I'm going to let you cut it, and then I'm going to let Mark get the first choice. <laughs> you know what that means? Mike was he really trying get to it get right it right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I was dealt uh, part of a candy bar. So uh, God has dealt to each one of us a measure of his faith, of the God kind of faith, the same what faith a gift. that created the world in the beginning, the same faith that God used in every instance, in the Old and New Testament, wow. we have a measure of the God kind of faith. So we need to know that and say that, I have. That's Romans 12, 3. Yeah. God has dealt to every person yeah. a measure and that, of faith. And that measure or that same spirit of faith, mm -hmm. that measure can be enriched. Right. And Paul told the Thessalonians, he said that your faith grows exceedingly. <laughs> wow. I kind of like that. Second Thessalonians 1, 3. He yeah. says, your faith 
grows exceedingly. So you've been dealt a measure of the God kind of faith, but, but that measure can actually increase. It can grow. Some people say it, it, it doesn't increase. Well, but here's the, 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 the source of faith okay. is the Word of God, okay. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if you can grow in revelation knowledge of the Word, mm -hmm. then you could grow in faith. So because the, that's where faith comes from. The more revelation of the word, <laughs> yeah. the more understanding, the increase in understanding, the more knowledge, the, the, the more you acting the on word, it. Yeah, the way you act on the word. Yeah, then you increase. Yeah, your faith grows. In other words, you can overcome things this year right. that you struggled with last year. And your faith can grow and go forward into new territory. So Paul told the Thessalonians, you, your faith grows. It doesn't just grow. He said it grows exceedingly. Where did you say that is? Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse three, your okay. faith grows exceedingly. So the God kind of faith, the measure that you and I have received can actually increase and it can be strengthened because the scripture says that Abraham was not weak in faith, right. but he became strong in faith giving glory to God. So it seems like uh, God deals to every person yeah. a measure of that faith, but it's up to each person what to develop it, it yeah. what we do with it, mm -hmm. to increase in it and abound in it. Yeah. So it's up to me, it's up to you. What, do you, what are you gonna do? Like Jesus said to the disciples one time, he said, where is your faith? Like you're not really I using left it your at home. faith. <laughs> yeah, you're just kind of living by the natural and what happens, where is your faith? Right. So believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural. One of my favorite quotes mm -hmm. comes from Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth has a book called Ever Increasing Faith. Mm -hmm. I think he had on record raised 24 people from the dead. So he's a, he's a man. I don't have one mouse. Great faith. <laughs> great. Uh, well, you know, you got to start somewhere. Maybe you could start with a, with a roach. <laughs> you might want to leave him dead. You could start with an ant. <laughs> but your faith grows exceedingly. 23 people. And so here Wigglesworth's book, Ever Increasing Faith, it says that he, um, in that book, yeah. talks about how to face impossibilities. Mm -hmm. And so Wigglesworth said something, one of my favorite quotes, he says, faith laughs at impossibilities. So, but sometimes people mm. stagger when they see things that just right. look impossible. That's never gonna change. That's always gonna be there. But faith faces things that look impossible and feeds on those things. Yeah. In other words, you feed on the Word of God and you see something looks impossible. You say, you know, it's a good opportunity for me to exercise my faith in God. Yeah. So concerning your faith in God, my other favorite quote from Wigglesworth is that any man can be changed by faith no matter how he may be fettered. So you want to write that down. Any man or any person can be changed by faith no matter how they may be fettered is what he said, the old English word that means bound. Any person can be changed by faith, no matter how they may be bound. That means that Satan cannot make a bondage that your faith cannot break off of you. So when you have faith in God, anybody can be changed. In other words, it doesn't matter how you're bound. It could be physical, emotional, financial, could be in your family, but your faith in God will break every fetter or every bondage. So if that faith has two parts to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Believing yeah. and speaking. So yeah. breaking a bondage off begins with how do I believe? What is my belief? Yeah. What is my belief system? Yeah. How do I live? And then what are my words? Hmm. What am I going to say that corresponds yeah. with this situation and it's God's word up mm -hmm. against it? It's not just me up against the situation, yeah. but God's word. Yeah. So when you talk about your believing and speaking, 2 Corinthians 4.13, I believe and I speak. In other words, the spirit of faith works the same. We have it. 
He didn't say we're trying to get it. Mm -hmm. He said we have it mm -hmm. and we maintain it. Now, if you look in 2 Corinthians 4, go down to verse 16, Paul says another key to the spirit of faith right there in that chapter. Yeah. He says, though my outward man is perishing, my inward man is renewed day by day. So he says, the spirit of faith works by the inward man. My outward man, circumstances, my outward man, he said, may be going through a lot of adversity, but my inward man is renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. So there's a daily renewing of the right. inner man. So the spirit of faith is a function of the spirit of man or the inner man. And so a lot of times we're more concerned with what's going on with the outside and God's more concerned with what's going on with our inner man. Yes. And it's looking at his word, looking unto him. Yeah. And I like the Amplified Bible. It says, our inner self is progressively renewed day mm -hmm. after day. So we need to see ourselves as not just up one day and down another. No, but you have the spirit of faith in you. That's God's mm -hmm. spirit in you. He's not leaving you. He's mm -hmm. staying in you. He's living in you. Mm -hmm. And as you feast on his word, every day. That's the key right there, isn't it? Looking at his word, uh, spending time with mm. him, with his word, mm. singing, putting his word in a song. Simple. Uh, Just simple uh, action. Yeah, Wigglesworth said, mm -hmm. uh, many people feed their body yeah. three hot meals a day and they feed their spirit one cold snack a week. In other words, your inner man must be renewed daily, not mm -hmm. once a week. Mm -hmm. And so to be strong in faith and to have the same spirit of faith, Paul says in verse 16, it's a product of my inner man, a daily renewing of my inner man. Now mm -hmm. go to verse 18. Yes. And he says, while we look not at things that are seen, while we look not at things that are wow. seen. So look at verse 18. While we look not at things that are seen, but at things which are not seen. He said, things that are seen are temporary. Mm -hmm. Things that are not seen are eternal. So the spirit of faith actually lives and feeds off of unseen realities and things that are eternal. So he says, while we look not, or we don't focus on appearances, that's why he says, actually, in the next chapter, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. He says, we walk by faith and not by appearances. While we look not at things that are seen, I'm not moved by what I see or what I feel. We look not at things that are seen, but at things which are not seen. In other words, faith sees eternal things and lives by the eternal realities, or you could just say faith lives by the unseen. That's right. Um, the Amplified Bible says, for the things that are visible are temporal, brief and fleeting, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Mm. And so that makes me think of Hebrews 1. Now faith is the substance of things not seen, mm. the evidence mm. of things hoped for. So Things, as we look in the Word, it's faith food. Mm -hmm. The spirit of faith comes off the page <laughs> mm -hmm. when you're looking at the Word of God. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. I remember, Mark, one mm -hmm. time, I was, well, many times, but one specific time I was reading the Word with a hungry heart. I was hungry. I wasn't just doing it for duty. But, man, I need to hear what you're, mm -hmm. you're saying to me. And as I did... The spirit of wisdom and revelation, hmm. you know, the Holy Spirit. Is it Brother Youngy Cho that said, "I read the Holy Spirit with"? Uh, yeah, well, with the Holy. He said some people read, I read the, the word with word. the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and uh, he said some people read it in the Greek, some people there read it, it in the Hebrew or something. He said, yeah. but I read, I read it, it in, in the Holy the, Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But those words just came off the page. It was like, oh, they're alive. And they just give life and strength and new faith. And I was looking at things that are not seen. And uh, that was my faith working. Hmm. Faith has eyes. Mm -hmm. Faith has a voice. Yeah. And, and as you meditate upon the Word of God, that's the function. It gets it going. It's watering and strengthening your faith. You're 
watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Anytime God wants to change someone's life, he touches their mouth. Never underestimate the power of your voice. The spirit of faith opens the door to the supernatural and enables you to receive from God and fulfill your divine destiny. Lift your voice and open the door to the supernatural in any situation you're going through. In the Spirit of Faith book, Mark Hankins shares valuable truths such as never run at your giant with your mouth shut, how to win the war of words, faith is an act, and much more. The Spirit of Faith is a pioneer spirit. It enables you to advance, break barriers, and go into new territory. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and to be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. The Conference Center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the Spirit of Faith book. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the teaching on the Spirit of Faith. We have a special treat for you. Our offer this week is my dad's book, the Spirit of Faith. If you have never read this book, you have got to go and get it right now. There have been times in my walk where I've been standing in faith for something and I thought, you know, I, I've got this, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm standing, I'm believing, I'm doing everything that I need to do. And then I have gotten this book back out after I've already read it. I get it back out and I'm like, oh my goodness. It just encourages you and gives you the strength and the fortitude to keep going, keep pressing and keep going, gaining the ground that God has for you. So I encourage you to go get this book. You can go to markhankins.org or you can call the number on the screen. Until next time, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. I'm Pastor Stan Pody, my wife, Mary. We pastor Faith Church in Ruston, Louisiana. We've been pastors there for almost 20 years. We have a great Word Faith Church. We graduated from Rama Bible Training Center, been raised up under our pastors, Pastors Mark and Trina Hankins, and we're called to teach and preach the Word of Faith and to carry the move of the Holy Spirit to our generation. God's doing a great thing. We're a church that believes in discipleship and outreach and and just, we've seen God do so many good things. We've obtained land and property, but more so than that, we've got people who love Jesus and who are living Jesus in their day-to-day -day life, full of the Holy Spirit, and walking out the book of Acts in their daily endeavors in life. And we also really um, train people in our church, or try to, how to raise godly children, how not to let your kids just be um, normal kids, to raise them to love God, to serve God, and not to sow wild oats or to go out and do the things that other kids might be doing, but training adults to raise their kids yeah. according to the Word. Yeah, according to the Word. Well, the way that we met our pastors, pastors Mark and Trina Hankins, um, you have to go back quite a ways. About 30 years ago, a little over 30 years ago, I was a hungry young man, recently filled with the Holy Spirit, hungry for God, hungry for the things of God. And I met Pastor Hankins at a meeting where another minister was ministering. And the moment that I shook his hand, you talk about divine connections, there was a, there was a moment, it was an Elijah, Elisha moment, where something got on me and I knew I had to follow him as he followed the Lord. It was a lifelong assignment. So long story short, in about three months time, I moved down here to Alexandria. And um, after a, about a year and a half of being here volunteering, um, came on staff for a while and um, just have followed him and his example of faith for the past 30 years. It's because of him that really we're married today because of following that, that um, supernatural relationship that we're um, even pastoring today. Yeah. When I first met Pastor Mark Hankins, my vision was very small. I, I have a gift from God to sing and minister. My vision was have a job during the week and have a singing group on the weekends, maybe travel within a couple hours time so I can get back and get to sleep in time to go to work the next morning. But when I got connected to pastors, Mark and Trina Hankins, it expanded my vision 
to see the calling, the gift of God, the potential and the destiny. And when you get rightly connected, like we did, I began to see the call to pastor, the call to raise up a generation. And we're doing what we're doing today because of supernatural relationships. And I thank God for those. My life is not the same, would not be the same without them because they've trained me up. I went to Rama, but I really learned everything that I know about ministry through them. And so I'm yeah. forever grateful, forever sold out to be their spiritual daughter and um, follow them as they follow, follow, them the, as Lord. They follow the Lord. We yeah. had, you know, really for years struggled yeah, as did. a church being week negative, to week. Yeah. negative every week. And so we just took the step of faith and decided on an amount and just said, we're just going to be weekly partners. So every week we would send this amount. And we watched yeah. our finances go from being in the negative to coming on up to where we got into, you know, where we're living three months ahead as a church. We're yeah. living three months ahead. Yeah. And, Praise God. and then <laughs> during the whole coronavirus shutdown, the very week that the stay at home order happened and, you know, you, yeah. you're unsure about, you know, where you are and, and yeah. you know, finances coming into the church. I just told our secretary up the giving starting this week let's start giving you know more than we've ever given weekly and yeah. um so we started doing that and i'm telling you yeah. i know that there's <laughs> been struggles through coronavirus and all the shutdowns but as yeah. for our church we never missed it we, we never increased. slacked yeah. we've increased we've only increased since yeah. we've been giving weekly to pastor hankins our church has grown our finances have grown we no longer struggle week to week giving we're actually yeah at least three months paid up in advance in our church accounts right now. You know, I would encourage anyone who's looking to move to the next level to find, stay connected and committed to someone who you're assigned to, yeah. be it a pastor, a spiritual father, someone who you just don't um, carry um, in name only, but you actually are committed to them, to their success. You follow them as they follow the Lord. And when you do that, when you sell out to follow that assignment, then God will get involved in your life as He has in yeah. ours. And I'm, so a, I'm proof of that. Yeah. It'll happen for anybody. Yeah. We're so thankful for our pastors so thankful. and so thankful to Jesus that He gave pastors to us. Yeah. We love our pastors, Mark and Trent Atkins. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional, and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.